Good evening. Once again, I hope that your Holy Week is memorable. I think it'll be a memorable Holy Week for all of us, uh, regardless of how much we can participate in spiritual disciplines that we are meant to engage during this time of Holy Week as we prepare for Easter. It is going to be uh, memorable because of what's going on in our world around us at this time and the fact that we're not going to be able to gather together at Easter like we are used to. And that's going to make it difficult. Today at the church, all alone in the sanctuary, I preached my Easter sermon and gave my benediction. And and uh, it was just a weird, um, sad <laughs> sort of uh, thing. Um, hard to describe. But I hope that uh, when the worship service is put together uh, by Lee Hoffman for uh, Sunday, that'll be certainly be joyous. Uh, we'll have uh, a number of participate, participants in that worship service. So I hope you'll find that on YouTube this weekend. So we're going to continue with our reading from Scripture, our meditative reading uh, on, of Scripture. And um, we continue with the last week of Jesus's life and these scenes from the last week. And we are given uh, now another confrontation. So on Monday night, it was a confrontation with the money changers in the temple. And then last night, it was a confrontation with the Pharisees' disciples and the Herodians. And tonight, it's a conversation. And tonight, it is a confrontation between Jesus and his own disciples. And that confrontation, that disagreement or argument um, comes in the context of a, a larger story, which is quite, it's quite a beautiful story. The reading tonight is meditative, and rather than reading it three times, we're going to do what we did last night. I'm just going to read the scripture one time through. And... I'm going to read it slowly, and I'm going to invite you to put yourself in the scene here and use all your senses. Imagine you're in ancient, uh, the first century uh, Jerusalem. You're in someone's home. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you smell? And just run through all your senses as you participate in this meditative reading from the Gospel of Matthew as Jesus grows closer to his crucifixion. Let us now prepare our hearts to hear the reading and participate in this reading. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O oh Lord, hear my prayer. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, come and listen to me. Now, while Jesus was at Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper,
A woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment. And she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But when the disciples saw it, they were angry and said, Why this waste? For this ointment could have been sold for a large sum, and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. By pouring this ointment on my body, she has prepared me for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever this good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. If you'd like to share your experience of hearing this and experiencing this story, just type in a comment. I'm immediately struck by the fact that Matthew tells us that Jesus was at Bethany Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper. It's the only time we ever hear of a Simon the leper in the scriptures. Why would he be in the house of a leper who is unclean? Or perhaps he has been healed. It's hard to know. But this Simon has a name. Even though we never encounter him again. So he goes to the home of Simon the leper, and then a woman, an unnamed woman, approaches Jesus. She's got a beautiful jar in her hand. It contains very costly ointment. She pours it on Jesus' head, 
as he sat at the table. And of course, if you're experiencing this, then you smell this perfume in the middle of this crowd of people who are there surrounding Jesus. This woman approaches him, pours the ointment on his head, which is an allusion to a coronation of a king, anointing the head with oil as a sign of blessing. So certainly there is that meaning in it. But also, of course, as Chris writes, there is another meaning, and that is that she is preparing Jesus for burial. And we know that when the women later went to the tomb, to, to uh, Jesus' tomb, their purpose was to anoint his body with spices. And this was the way you prepared a body for burial. And so here is this woman who is, according to Jesus, preparing him for his burial, preparing him for death. But in the middle of this very strange activity, here is or here are the disciples. In one of the Gospels, it identifies Judas specifically, but here Matthew just says the disciples are angry. The disciples are, they are good Presbyterians. They are pragmatists. Why would you spend all this money on this ointment and waste it by pouring it on a man's head when it could have been sold for a large amount of money the money could have been given to the poor that's probably what we would have thought right we care about the poor we care about the homeless we don't want to see money wasted so the disciples are kind of like you and me just good pragmatists good with managing money. And so all through these scenes that we are looking at in Holy Week, the question always arises, what's the most important thing for human life? Are, is caring for the poor important? Yes. But here, it seems to, Matthew seems to be telling us in telling this story that also basic kind actions, even extravagantly kind actions, are beautiful and necessary for human life. So much of our kindness is sort of transactional, right? You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. When is the last time you've had the opportunity to simply be extravagantly kind to someone and not counted the cost? Not expected anything in return. I think that's what this story represents, is the power and the importance of simple kindness in human life. And so I hope that during Holy Week, you will find opportunities for kindness. I know in a, a time when we're not physically close to other people, We don't have those opportunities as we have at other times. But of course, even in our remote ways, we can find ways to be kind, find ways to reach out to people, to give of ourselves extravagantly, expecting nothing in return. Jesus tells his disciples, she is doing something beautiful for me. 
And it's interesting. It's the same Jesus who said, blessed are the poor. And who told the wealthy young ruler, give everything you have away to the poor and come follow me. Jesus, who obviously cared about the poor. It's interesting that here he says, the poor you will always have with you. It's just the basic function of our human life is that there's rich and there's poor. And so Jesus is saying, yes, caring for the poor is important. But here, this woman has done an extravagant thing. And she has blessed me and anointed my body for burial. And so this story reminds me of uh, a movie. Some of you probably remember Schindler's List. And there's one scene in Schindler's List when Oscar Schindler is speaking with some of the German officers at a train station. And they are waiting for the next train of Jews to come to the station and then go on its way to the concentration camp. And it's a very hot day. And the train comes into the station and the Jewish people are packed shoulder to shoulder in these cattle cars, in these hot steaming hot cattle cars. They are thirsty. They are crying for help. And Schindler, Oscar Schindler, grabs some fire hoses. And with this sense of bizarre urgency that the officers just don't understand because they don't seem to have any sense of empathy. With this bizarre urgency, Oscar Schindler takes his, these uh, water hoses and sprays water up on the top of these cars where the Jews are packed inside so that the water cools the car but also leaks down through the roof so that the people inside can drink. And he's frantically going car to car, encouraging some of the other people there, some of the other German officers to grab hoses, to douse these cars, to alleviate for just a few moments the pain of these people, people who were going to their death in the concentration camp. And that's what this woman does. For a few brief moments, she relieves the pain and the suffering of Jesus. It's extravagant. It's not very practical in the long run, but it's a beautiful thing. May you find beauty in this holy week. Peace be with you.